Over the last decade, the Freeride World Tour has established itself as the world's most prestigious big mountain skiing and snowboarding competition. The first stop of this year's Freeride World Tour was in Hakuba, Japan, where the snow is usually so deep you need a snorkel. But this year, the legendary Japan was in short supply, leaving low tide conditions on the lower mountain. But still good snow for a freeride competition in the high alpine. The cosy town of Hakuba, with its 9,000 citizens, is one of Japan's most famous ski resorts. It's located in the Nagano prefecture, surrounded by nearly 3,000 meter high mountains. It is famous for its snow quality and powder. This year's venue slash playground was the mountain Kuzurezawa, the perfect location for the first stop of the Freeride World Tour. Next, the tour went to Kicking Horse. This famous resort sits just above the bustling town of Golden in British Columbia and is known as the Champagne Powder Capital of Canada. About 3,500 residents live here and the average annual snowfall at the Alpine Kicking Horse Mountain Resort is 650 centimetres. This year, the ozone facing Kicking Horse offered two different starting points for the riders to choose from. The third stop of the 2020 Freeride World Tour took the riders to Ordino Arcalis in the Pyrenees. Known as the most remote ski resort in Andorra, with a summit elevation of 2,625 metres. The town of Ordino has a history stretching back to the 9th century, and today it has a population of just over 5,000 people. Andorra is a landlocked sovereign microstate deep in the mountain range of the Pyrenees. These huge rocky summits form the natural border between France and Spain, with peaks reaching nearly 3,500 metres. The face was at Quince Metros, a short, fast descent demanding precision from the riders to link together features. The last stop of the 2020 Freeride World Tour was Fieberbrunn in Austria. It's located in the Austrian district of Tyrol, in the middle of the Pilasi Valley, near the famous town of Kitzbühel and right in the middle of the Kitzbühel Alps. The main event and also the rerun of the snowboard men's event from Andorra took place on the Vildseloder mountain. For Jacqueline Passo, the new season didn't start that well. In Japan, she had an uncharacteristic crash right at the beginning of her run and had to settle for eighth place. But things started improving for her in Kicking Horse. She didn't make it into the top three, but a solid run secured her fifth place on the Ozone. Like her husband at Rene Barkred, it would appear that Jackie is only getting better with age. In Andorra, she sent it off the top lip and linked it straight into the second drop. Then on the big cliff band in the middle of the face, she sent it. It was another clean run for the American in Ordino Arcalis and her first podium of the season. She was building momentum. She'd been threatening retirement at the end of 2019, but the big mountain specialist has skied fearlessly and she backed it up with another big line in Fieberbrunn, second place for Jackie Passo in Austria and third in the overall rankings. Hedvig Vessel, the mogul skier who competed in the Winter Olympics in Sochi, has transitioned seamlessly into freeride skiing. In Japan, Vessel opened up with a very solid cliff at the top of the face and then stomped one of the biggest backflips of the season, forcing the judges to reward her with a big score and first place in Hakuba. In Canada, all eyes were on the Norwegian in the women's ski category, but it wasn't to be for Wessel in Kicking Horse. A crash saw her slump to 10th. In Andorra, she was looking to make amends for her disappointment. Again, we were treated to an impressive backflip. She tracked down the face with a couple of conservative drops, making sure she was clean and consistent. In a very strong field, she was rewarded again with first place. In Fieberbrunn, like Kicking Horse, it did not go well for Wessel. A crash on the upper part of the face saw her end the Tyrol event in 11th. 
but her efforts were enough for second place overall. Let's get to know the reigning world champion in the women's ski category, Ariana Tricoma. My approach to the season, I don't go out with a plan, you know, when I ski, I don't tell myself, oh, today I'm gonna drop cliffs. I just go out and usually I just improve because I'm having fun without even realizing. And I see an improvement from winter to winter, so I just guess I stay with the fun and see what happens. It's so crazy when I think I'm double world champ, like when I think about it I still, I can't, I don't realize, you know, what it means. So winning the last two years has been, of course, amazing and it brought me so far and just opened up so many doors, so I'd be forever thankful to the World Tour for, for doing that to me. Everyone is like telling me, oh yeah, get the triple, get the triple. I'd love to, I mean, I can't lie, it'd be awesome to get the triple. I do my best. I might try to send it a little more because I know I, I could and I don't want to get stuck on thinking about judging and points too much, but just enjoy myself and progress as a skier and as a person. Expectations were high for the double reigning world champion, but she kicked off the season in Hakuba with some very tidy and stylish skiing. Showcasing her trademark 360 in the middle of the face, it was good enough for second. In Canada, her confidence was again proved by her relaxed skiing. She threw another 360, and that would in the end prove to be the difference for the Italian, claiming another second place. In the Pyrenees, Tricomi was carrying an ankle injury, but on the face, she looked as stylish and as solid as ever. Her line choice wasn't as aggressive as usual, and she got bucked slightly trying to shut down speed for one hit, which could have seen her docked points, so she had to settle for sixth place. In Fieberbrunn, Ariana was under an immense amount of pressure, but she didn't hesitate, taking on the Household Cliff at the top and then making her way out to the left-hand side onto this wind lip, where again we saw that trademark 360. In the lower face, she sent a huge drop to the finish. It was first place for Tricomi in Fieberbrunn and first place in the overall rankings. So overall rankings in arguably the hardest fought category this year, women's ski. Tricomi is three-time world champion. In second place, the Norwegian Hedvig Wessel and the American Jackie Passo in third. Before we look at the top three in the men's ski competition, let's have a chat with the 2018 world champion. I am Christopher Trudeau. <laughs> I spent my winters traveling America, Japan, and Europe, uh, skiing with my best friends and competing. Uh, the main thing is just to stay healthy through all the travels. You know, you survive jet lag, upper skis, and get lost in Tokyo, carry all ski bags all over the world, and eat healthy. So if, if you manage to catch a cold or or hangover on the right, wrong day, you you won't ski as good. So you have to like take care of yourself and uh, have good timing. Try to keep everything simple and keep your routine so you can just focus on, uh, on your comp run. I mean, learning the face and watching it in your binoculars because you're not allowed to go into the venue at all before you run, it's like the, it's a huge part of the sport and people often don't realize that, that we're not actually able to ski or be in the face before. So the more time and the more you know and being able to, to turn that around in your head and experience it and visualize it because I think it's super important for safety and being able to put down a good run. It's impossible to pinpoint who is going to be on the podium because there is at least half the field could win the comp it feels like. It comes down to who is having a good day, who is feeling, having the best feeling and good timing as well in picking a line that works that day.
Andrew Pollard was Rookie of the Year with a fourth place finish overall in 2019. He opened his account in Japan with a fast, solid run. He stomped some sizeable cliffs in Hakuba and was rewarded with a fourth place. Pollard had proved he'd picked up in 2020 where he left off in 2019. Now he needed to back that up. He launched his first cliff in Kicking Horse and then showed the rest of the face a clean set of heels. Third place in Canada. Pollard then opened up in Andorra with a stylish 360 and doubled into a drop to stay consistent and claim sixth position. But it wasn't to be for Pollard in Fieberbrunn. Another strong 360 and two huge jumps. But it would only be enough for ninth place on the Vildsee loader for the American. Still, his consistency meant he took third place in the overall rankings. Buddy. Turdell was not in good shape in Japan. He opened with a nice cliff drop, but his 360 had a sketchy landing. It was 12th place for the Swede. After that disappointing start in Hakuba, Turdell didn't hesitate in kicking horse and threw a huge backflip over this ridge. He was then able to control the speed and cut back into another cliff before sending the line into one of the most technical zones on the face and taking on one of the biggest cliffs in the zone. He lined it up perfectly. There could be absolutely no doubt in the judge's mind who would take the win in the men's ski category. In Andorra, the 2018 world champ decided to head out onto the steeper left-hand side of the drop-in to showcase the nerves of steel he possesses. From there, he kept his foot flat to the floor, blasting an amazing backflip. Then, rather than take the skier's right-hand line, he headed further to the left, opted for another backflip. His efforts were rewarded with third place in Ordino Arcalis. It wasn't to be Turdell's day in the Tyrol. Although he started fast and solid, he ended up getting caught up in some shrubbery. It was a costly mistake, which would see him finish in 17th place. But due to the cancellation of the Verbier event, Turdell found himself on the podium. Second place overall for the Swede. Isaac Freeland showed two huge drops in Hakuba. The rookie then banked that up with a solid 360. It was enough for fifth place. In Kicking Horse, Freeland opened up with another solid cliff, followed by a stylish 360. A fast run, but only good enough for 11th. The Californian who plies his trade in Ulta, Utah, hadn't yet unveiled his freestyle repertoire until this switch Misty straight into a mute grab. He then backed up that stunning top section with a very fast midsection. A strong run from Freeland and a statement of intent worth second place in Andorra. Freeland had proved his freestyle credentials. Fieberbrunn would be a completely different test though. It's now the turn of his big mountain skills. He opened with the 360 and redirected instantly off the household cliff. Then he controlled his speed perfectly on the traverse, managing another 360 off the wind lip. He then hit the gas as if he hadn't already, claiming second place in Fieberbrunn and the Freeride World Tour Championship for 2020. So, Freeland in first, the Swede Turdell in second, Pollard in third, and a trio of young Kiwis waiting to leave their mark in fourth to sixth. Montana raised, but currently residing in Oregon. Erica Vikander, AKA the Viking, was very strong in her Hakuba run. She used strong edge control in variable snow conditions to really shine and took third place. 
In kicking horse, Vikander opted for start number one. A half cab off the top cornice was a brilliant way to PK the judge's attention. She then laid out some huge turns in the middle of the face, leaving a massive vapor trail like an F-15 fighter jet. Canada offered another third place. Unfortunately, Andorra was not to be for the Viking. After two third places, she had to settle for fourth place in the Pyrenees, despite a very technical line. In Austria, Vikander used her trademark style and got stuck into some big turns. She even flashed out a method and then followed that up with a frontside air into some of the deepest snow on the face. It was another solid run and third place in Austria also secured third place in the overall ranking. Australian rookie Michaela Davis-Meehan knew that some of the big guns were out for 2020, so it was her chance to leave her mark at her first ever Freeride World Tour event. She started strong in Japan with a solid run and was rewarded with second place in Hakuba. In Canada, it was disappointment for Davis-Meehan, fifth place, but it only served to fire her up for Andorra. In Ordino Arcalis, the Slopestyle rider turned free rider went into her line and popped straight off a rock which really impressed the judges and turned heads amongst the spectators. Some solid turns all the way down into the finish and the judges rewarded the rookie with first place. In Fieberbrunn, the Australian got stuck into one of the most exposed areas of the Vildsee loader. Her line score was maxed out after blasting through the steepest section of the face and a beautiful method off this drop, second in Fieberbrunn and second overall. Reigning world champion Marion Hayati got a perfect score of 10,000 from last year's tour. In Hakuba, she opened once again with fast, solid riding all the way down. Confident grabs and good flow, all trademarks of Hayati's riding. The judges rewarding her with first place. It's no understatement to say that Marion Hayati is in a class of her own in the women's snowboard category. In Canada, she took on three big features on the ozone face and left the rest of the field in her wake. Another first place for Hayati. In Ordino Arcali, she started her run in a very strong position, taking on one of the steepest and most exposed areas of the face. But from here, you could say it wasn't the same aggressive run that we're used to seeing from the French woman. It was the first chink we saw in her armour and she had to settle for third. In the Tyrol, she was back to winning ways and she set out of the gate aggressively and didn't hesitate in airing the most critical section of the face. She then controlled her speed in what was a masterclass in freeride snowboarding. Haiti then found a monster step down, yet another solid run and yet another title. World champion in 2020 for Marion Haiti. So confirmation of the results, Hayati again dominates the field to be crowned world champion, followed by Michaela Davis-Meehan and Erica Vikander. There has been some truly incredible riding during this year's Freeride World Tour. So let's take a closer look at some of the best POV footage. Yeah, bud, see you at the bottom, man, have fun. Guys at the bottom, do your thing, stay on your feet, and shall we have a beer at the bottom? Me. Okay. Excuse me, could you make a way? Could you make a way? That's my takeoff. Switch oh. under flip off the top. Yeah. What the? Yeah, all right. And I was like, ah! Dude, you have power in your face. I, I know. <laughs> How'd you do? I got four death blows! I'm in the hot seat! Come on, hot seat! Yeah, buddy! Hot seat! Yeah! Grass boys! Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah! Yeah! Come on! Who just won?
Let's now hear from Sammy Lubke, one of the veterans on tour. My name is Sammy Lubke. I've been on the tour for now. It's my eighth year. Yeah, I've had ups and downs. I've had uh, a few years getting close to reaching the title and then uh, three years straight of winning it. And uh, kind of the last couple years have just been just having fun. What's kept me coming back for more is probably just the excitement. People we compete with are like friends, family, you know, like, so coming back to see them and traveling to all these places, but still exciting competing against like such young, hungry kids these days. So I guess that kind of keeps you going. Sammy opened in Hakuba with a packed top section and floated into the mid part of the face where his board control came to the fore. Working his way across the big spine, he threw a front side 360 and then looked for a transfer with this stale fish grab. Unfortunately, a big ice ball in the landing proved to be his undoing. It was fourth place in Japan. Sammy Lubke is one of the most experienced snowboarders on the free ride world tour. And he knew this kicking horse face better than most. And with a very clean run, he earned himself second place. In the rerun of Andorra, which took place in Fieberbrunn, Lubke opened with a sweet backside 360. He then linked that with a frontside 360 further down the face before he headed into the forest. Overall, fourth place for him in the rerun. Lubke was then able to make amends in Austria. This run was bookended by a beautiful start on the Housel Cliff and one of the biggest airs of the day to finish. Victor Delarue is part of a very impressive snowboarding dynasty, but he set about making his own legacy. The 2019 world champion at the first time of asking set himself up in Japan with a huge hit at the top. He then managed to hold on to that, but it put him offline and he was forced to improvise on the lower section of the face, but he was still good enough for first. In Kicking Horse, Victor opened his run with a beautiful backside 360. He then tore into the face with some beautiful lines, making his way down onto a smaller cliff at the bottom. Third place for Victor De La Rue in Canada. In the rerun of the Andorra event, Victor took fifth place. He did open with a stylish 360, but he lost his edge and took a tumble further down the face. With the benefit of hindsight, it could be the mistake that cost him the title. Victor yep. just couldn't find his mojo on the Vildsi loader face that day. In FIBA run, he had some decent drops, but by his standards, it was a conservative run. Eighth place for De La Rue, which would see him slip to second in the overall rankings. Ah! American Nils Mindnick blew up on the freestyle scene with his brother hands in 2012. Since then, he's steadily been building his backcountry credentials, and he proved them capably on the face here in Hakuba. A beautiful backside 360 in the middle of the face, followed by a couple of technical drops, and second place for the rookie in Japan. In Kicking Horse, Min Nick showed a fast and solid run, but couldn't impress the judges. Instead, he had to settle for sixth place in Canada. In the rerunning of the Andorra Snowboard Men's Contest in Fieberbrunn, Nils Mindnick opened up with a beautiful frontside 360. That was then backed up with a rotation in the opposite direction, a backside 360. Slight backseat landing, but he put a full stop on the run with this huge backside air to finish. And finally, Mindnick claimed his maiden victory on the Freeride World Tour. There is no doubt that the Vildsi loader face seems to lend itself to Mindnick's style of riding as he looked so comfortable. In the Fieberbrunn event proper, he opened up with another frontside 360. He then got into some big mountain turns, but it was this, a shifty late backside 180 that really defined his run. Road switch, and then another frontside 360. 
a very, very impressive day for Nils Mindnik. Two wins and first overall in the rankings. So those two wins in one day secured Nils Mindnik the overall title in 2020. Victor De La Rue in second and the veteran Sammy Lubke in third. The Freeride World Tour 2020 was a huge success, although everybody missed the last stop in Verbier. But this just increases the anticipation for next season. Stay tuned when the best free riders in the world take on the Freeride World Tour in 2021. <laughs>